Welcome, hipsters, to another episode of Hips News. And today we have a out of this world, no pun intended, uh, speaking episode. I'm here with a, a great individual who uh, who is also uh, that has contribute to the realm of uh, science and extra extraterrestrial department. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Wilbur Al- Allen. Thank you for coming. Hello. Yes. Thank you. I'm I'm honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, giving us uh, your uh, uh, your time. I know you're a busy uh, in, uh, person and individual. Um, uh, wow. Uh, so much to say. So little time. Um, let's let's just jump right into it. Um, you lead. Uh, you uh, what? led you in the career of uh, ufology or becoming a ufologist? Um, my, 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 my parents were United States Air Force, and I was raised on various bases around the world. Okay. When I was five, my parents were stationed at a base in England, and at this base in England, I woke up to a room full of extraterrestrials. They were there. They were in my face. Dude, I had the ultimate shock of my life because as a child, I had never seen or heard or even thought of extraterrestrials or aliens. And every base that my parents would be stationed at, these very same aliens would show up in my room like clockwork on a daily basis. And that's what got me into this. I started when I was five, and then I developed the uh, knowledge and technology to sample whatever these objects are, which exist in a realm of light humans cannot see into. Mm. Humans are very limited in the range of light in which we can see, daylight, nighttime, especially at night, we're especially limited in in vision because we just do not have the ability to generate a version of full color night vision or full color infrared we just don't have that capability as humans with our eyes so i looked into Mm. advanced advanced technology and in my opinion that advanced technology was a nikon d5 the d5 nikon it's now d6 however I took this D5 Nikon, which is 4 million ISO 4K high definition night vision camera, and converted it to full spectrum infrared. And in doing so, it created a completely different kind of imaging technology because the imaging technology initially used in the D5 is designed specifically for full color night vision. Full color night vision. Wow. So I took this D5 Nikon, converted it to full spectrum infrared, and did a five year study on specific regions of space with a telescope that was aligned magnetically. Meaning, in each of my video samples, the stars all flow in the same direction. Mm. There's, there's no deviation in samples. You know how some people randomly pick a site and start taking pictures randomly. They they do not take into effect positioning, uh, positioning based on magnetic north, south, east, and west. Positioning. positioning. When you align your systems positionally, regardless to where you are on Earth, you see that region of space which your telescope is aligned with in infrared full spectrum infrared no one's ever thought about that nasa is not on this page no one quite at this level of the game thought to go that route and in doing so i took technology that already existed 
and modified it to fit my application. So I took existing technology and created something else from that existing technology. For example, <clears throat> for my lens application, my lens application is a 5,600 millimeter telescope, reflect, reflect, reflector telescope. I took that 5,500 millimeter telescope, modified it, and converted it into a 900 millimeter f2.0 lens. And that, that specific lens, 900 millimeter at f2, does not exist. Does not exist. That technology does not exist. If it did exist, it would be millions of dollars. And from existing technology, I created this lens application mounted the modified camera onto the lens application and had a system in which I could scan space in real time. And space meaning um, the specific region in which the telescope is aligned in. It was what I would call a fixed pool of analysis. I created a fixed pool of analysis in all of my sample zones. Now, I had multiple sample zones in multiple regions of the United States. And in each sample zone, the telescope was aligned exactly the same as it was aligned the first time, and the second time, and the third time. Its alignment is crucial in this analysis. Because basically, when you look at my samples, and I ask people to go to Dr. Wilbur Allen YouTube, and look at the samples on Dr. Wilbur Allen YouTube. The samples show specifically a multitude of Tic Tacs, which were initially encountered by the US Navy in 2004 on board the USS Nimitz. However, the samples that I documented indicated that each of these Tic Tacs has a completely different identity signature, indicating that each one of the objects that I documented was different, like each of us has a face. Each one of these objects had uniform definitions and those uniform definitions were defined by the first object that I documented. And in documenting this object, I used a 4K infrared D5 Nikon and I took that 4K footage into a 4K application, and in this case, that 4K application was 3D Max. And in 3D Max, I created the exact environment in which the 4K video was produced. With that 3D environment, I could put a virtual camera into that environment and use it like a microscope and go in and out and look specifically at the objects in my videos tracking them, and which means as the object moved in the 4K video, a 3D camera in 3D Max would track the 4K video sample with a virtual camera on top of the object and track the object throughout the frame. So it was like creating and capturing uh, an event with multiple cameras. However, those multiple cameras were virtual. And virtual camera technology, if it is indeed a rep replica of actual technology, give us the capability of doing whatever we like photographically in that environment. So it's video, a video environment with a 3D camera, which is programmed based on that environment, tracking the object throughout the frame. And that is how I did my analysis. I would take the virtual cameras, track the object in the frame, and run the data, excuse me, from that virtual application as a additional camera. Meaning like I could have, I shot it with one camera with an actual camera, a 4K D5 Nikon infrared. And then I added a multitude of virtual cameras to the environment and gave it, gave it a, the possibility of a 20 camera shoot without the necessity of having 20 cameras.
However, they exist in the virtual world, meaning in, in each one of the cameras in the virtual world was a 4K file. And it did not degrade the quality of the sample um, as it would if we had done this in an analog environment as like 35 millimeter film. As I could only go but so far before I started to get into granular distortion and granular distortion takes away from the actual focus of the content. So to avoid granular distortion, I had to limit the amount of magnification I could apply to that environment. But because I shot and filmed all of my samples using National Geographic standards, I was a contractor for National Geographic magazine, but using National Geographic standards create a five-year study based on a fixed pool of analysis of different regions of space aligned specifically with the rotation of Earth. And in each of the samples, as mentioned, the stars all flow in the same direction. It's all specifically the same. There's no deviation in any of the files in terms of the overall consistency associated to the creation of the product. And in the creation of the product, you know, I, I did not um, do a lot in digital, in the digital domain, because most of my work specifically, specifically was high definition 35 millimeter film, which is, it's almost basically in the same category as a 4K video but in, in an analog, in an analog capacity, you know, analog and digital are different. Right. And based on the standards of your technology, and I've always been a user of Nikon cameras because their optics and their mechanisms are superb in terms of application, quality, usability, conditions in which the op application can be used. And their overall design is specifically designed for um, lunar applications, lunar applications as in NASA, uh, during their lunar exploration. The camera basically with the titanium hull is impervious to uh, EM distortion or EM radiation. It, it is because of its design and its design being uh, made of magnesium and magnesium cannot be penetrated by nuclear par particles. Um, they developed a system in which there is no um, possibility of damage. If, uh, for example, I was in an area in which an EM pulse was emitted. An EM pulse is a uh, form of a nuclear weapon that's, that's currently being used by the US military. But the EM pulse, destroys all the electronics and leaves the organics alone. It doesn't bother organic material at all. It just destroys electronics and the electronic components. And once you destroy the electronic infrastructure of society, they're completely doomed. Right. And, and that's basically the manner in which um, I believe uh, the things are happening around us. Wow. Wow, that's yeah, that's a whole lot to digest uh, right there, brother. Let, let me tell you, it's 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 more specific than any of the research conducted by NASA. More specific, more specific. Meaning, uh, I took it upon myself to, to to create a level of technology that simply did not exist. And think about it, you know. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Nikon camera. But a D5 Nikon in full spectrum infrared is the most extraordinary camera I've ever owned. There, there is no other camera like it in the world based on its configuration. Now, understanding, I'm not telling everyone to go and take their cameras and convert, convert them to infrared because infrared is a study within itself. I would have to perhaps teach a class for four years at a graduate level, at a graduate level, for them to even understand the semantics associated to generating the file. 
Wow. So you have to understand that we're talking specifically high tech, a technology that simply does not exist. Right. So I created this technology to scan space and it scans space in real time in a manner in which humans cannot see. As, as, as I mentioned, the limitations of human eyes are ISO zero, zero would be during sunlight hours, and ISO 800 during the night. While my research is conducted at ISO 409600, 409,600 ISO, which is a um, hundred times more sensitive than human vision. So in going this level of sensitivity in infrared was a completely new level of technology simply which does not exist that I had to study and conduct research in for five years, which I conducted. And the samples that I generated in the five years of research that I conducted are absolutely extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary and documented to National Geographic standards in 4K video. So no lights were used from my location. My location specifically used the sensitivity of the imaging sensor of the camera to document that region of space, which was 900 millimeters at f2.0 from the lens application that I created from existing technology. Wow, extraordinary indeed. Uh, I, I've been, uh, every so often, I'm going to your YouTube channel and checking uh, out the videos that you post. And uh, I, I'm, I can only say that I'm speechless because you have some, I mean, some extraordinary footage. Uh, there. Extraordinary, understatement, understatement. And, yeah. and all of the material, the way, the way it's generated, and if a person like, and you know I work with the History Channel on, right. on several broadcasts, History Discovery, the Weather Channel. Right. On, on those programs, for the ideas they're trying to convey, they're using CGI to try to replicate the experiences of an individual that had a close encounter in the area they were in. You took while, <laughs> yes, continue. While, while what I did was sample space in real time under the conditions in which the camera and telescopes were applied and image the same object on a nightly basis. It was almost as if no matter where I went, when I set up my telescope application, these objects, and, and I have them categoristic, categoristically categorized in specific files, these specific objects constantly showed up in, the, in those airspaces. And that was kind of weird because I was doing random setups from Virginia to Florida to California, random setups, and getting the same objects in space. Mm. The same. That indicates whatever these are, they're everywhere. Well, I can only uh, imagine um, these uh, UAPs, the way you, you're describing it, uh, just uh, say if we just take it back, um, back to the time where pirates would travel the seas and such. So this galactic, um, I guess, map, look, look, look. Let's, let's go back further. Let's go okay. back further to the, to the times of Jesus. Okay. And in the Bible, the illustrations they had in the Bible of anomalies that these people described. Mm -hmm. And what was, what, is, what was interesting, one of the, the samples that is in the Bible showed people dressed in Middle Eastern attire, shepherd-like, shepherd-like, mm -hmm. during the days of Jesus. And they're, they're somewhere located in a mountainous region. And in this mountainous region, they showed these ancient, ancient beings in the vicinity of a glowing cigar-like object. And the cigar-like object had a energy field around it, an energy field, force field. Wow. So I started looking at these illustrations 
And then I started looking at the samples that I generated using the camera technology that I created and noticed that the illustrations from the Bible and the samples that I generated with my camera technology were exactly the same, except mine was in real time, a, a real time National Geographic standards motion picture application right. done correctly, done correctly, done correctly. And each file is a uniform. So we, we have a uniform analysis, a basis of analysis. Each one of the files, you noticed, if you looked at them, that the stars were visible and that when the camera technology tracked the anomaly, those stars that were visible in the stationary 4K sample maintained stationary positioning. So it is only the object and the virtual camera that are being tracked within the sample. Okay. Wow. And it shows some abstract, abstract stuff, dude. Totally abstract. They're organisms. They're not spacecraft. Okay, so they're or, more, more or less organisms. Well, I mean, from um, the little uh, research and understanding that I know of, I, I was going to um, kind of segue to this. Um, a lot of these organisms or uh, UAPs or UFOs um, that's um, been cited they all seem to have a common denominator of um, of power spots or, 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 or highly magnetic um, generated areas, if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, no, you're not, because I, I, I mentioned I have 3,000 samples in 4K high definition of this Tic Tac organism. And in each of the samples, what was apparent was a energy field or a level of energy fields that were around these objects. It wasn't like one field being emitted from the object. It was like multiple fields being emitted from this object. And in some of the samples where there was atmospheric uh, particulates like uh, cloud matter, for example, even though the, 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 the space may appear to the human eye to be clear, there is still cloud matter that's like totally diffused into the sample. You, we, our eyes just can't see at that level of light. As these objects passed through that layer of energy, they, 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 they looked like um, a torch in a sense, in a sense, in a sense, because a torch would, puts off a uniform level of heat when it, burns while these were a a gradient level of energy gradient meaning that whatever each level of energy was was totally different well that totally that, different that uh aligns with the like you was mentioning earlier the biblical aspect of it the way they described it was a, a chariot on fire across across mm -hmm. moving across the, uh, the sky okay. That, that, that's because of early interpretation. And you have to think like this. In, in those days, in the days of Jesus specifically, dude wouldn't be thinking about UFOs or spacecraft right. or organisms or anything like that because we were just not that evolved intellectually. Intellectually. There were, there were smart people who had common sense in a sense. But in terms of overall scientific application, I would have to say somewhere along the way aliens intervened with these people so you know it's, it's different brother totally different yeah, yeah i mean if you would just say and commonly speaking like uh, like you were saying if uh, you tried to describe that probably would be the best description of a chariot on fire or like you said a torch exactly mm -hmm. exactly we're just, we're just not scientifically trained mm -hmm. it, it's it would be different if i was a military expert but basically i am mm -hmm. because i was raised on U.S. military bases, but nevertheless, I started encountering these things as a child, and and I, as I mentioned, my parents were U.S. Air Force Street Strategic Air Command. They worked specifically in electronic and nuclear warfare. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like in 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 a, as I mentioned, I've got three thousand samples of the specific anomaly, and of the three thousand samples. Maybe 10, maybe, I'm on a, fortunate if I can say that much, maybe 10 of the 3,000 files I can match. Because I was not able to match them, it indicated to me that they are a species of some sort.
and they are organism which each has unique features. They though they all have this, in a speak, a tic tac shape. Not all of them had the tic tac shape. Some of them had a more um, triangular configuration associated with them. Mm, mm, mm. So it was different, but it what makes the samples different. And on the ones that I'm talking about specifically, the energy field around the tic tac itself is most spectacular. Like I've never seen anything like that before. It's, it's, it is again, something that is imaged in invisibility using a camera technology that simply does not exist. So there's no existing data to um, form a comparison. You, you understand sometimes in research, the basis of research, you have to have a basis of analysis in which you form the research upon. Right. In, th in this specific case, because I created this totally advanced technology, there was nothing to make reference to other than my conventional knowledge in high definition imaging, in imaging in high definition. Because you have to understand photographic standards in order to recreate uh, this, the conditions that you're trying to film. Mm -hmm. and, and the conditions that I created with the telescope application were all spatial, uh, at uh, 400,000 ISO, 400,000 ISO humans can't see it at, at that level of light. It's impossible. We're talking about extreme invisibility, extreme invisibility, and in infrared. Wow. Um, well, wow. We're uh, unbelievable. We're now uh, under 10 minutes. Uh, a lot of things I want to ask. Uh, Three quick questions. Uh, do you think that uh, since uh, your youth uh, uh, having this first contact uh, with uh, these uh, alien uh, be uh, beings, do you think that, uh, like, you know, making a comparison, like Nikola Tesla, uh, he said that uh, he uh, believed that they have reached out and and spoke to him as well. Do you think yes. they uh, influenced you to create your um, technology? Indeed, I, I believe. I, yes. I believe. I believe the technology I created was a byproduct of a download from ET. Oh yeah, I figured that. And it, yeah. when I'm telling you, when I'm telling you, as a child, on all the military bases I lived at around the world, I saw the same aliens. They appeared in my room specifically. Wow. And my parents, my parents knew about that. Wow. wow. Extraordinary. So we're, yeah. we're talking first contact. First yes, contact. That's exactly the first contact. Wow. As as a child, mind you, as a child. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that child is me today. And look what I'm showing you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously uh, there was a purpose there. Um, absolutely yeah. absolutely absolutely we are we are essentially programmed for our mission right programmed yes. right. and and i created a program that was 100 percent consistent a fixed pool of analysis and i created the perfect pool of environments to do my analysis perfect and, and, and as, as i mentioned on all of the samples on dr wilbur allen youtube the videos all show stars and the stars all flow in the same direction on each file. So we have uniform consistency uh, as a form of analysis, dude. Think about it. How many people would even, even think to do uh, samples from one region of space consistently aligned? You know, you know exactly where you're going and you just sit right there. Mm -hmm. And as you sit right there, you get the same objects in each pool that you do an analysis in. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, another, another quick question. Uh, I know that you have been recently. You was on, like you said, National Geographic Graphics and uh, History Channel, and you did. Uh, you uh, had a team that you went to the Arctic and the Antarctic. Can you quickly yes. go into what's the difference between the Arctic and Antarctic? I know one supposed to have a base, and and the other one supposed to be. Maybe the uh, um, area with the opening to the center of the uh, maybe Earth. maybe maybe the uh, the location of Atlantis. 
Okay. Oh, and, wow. an advanced, an advanced society. That's what was interesting. Also, the um, fact that the ice is melting. And as the ice melts, the fish that were frozen in the ice for the millions of years that they have been frozen reanimate. Wow. And they reanimate. And then what happens? They start to say, oh, we have a new, we've discovered a new species. While it's not a new species, it's primordial. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> wow, that's, that's heavy. Yeah. Uh, uh, no doubt, I will, I will have uh, links and uh, also I will post uh, um, image, imagery of your website as well as uh, information uh, of some documentation that you have. Yes, there's, a, there's two, <laughs> two main websites. There's ufodc.com okay. and ufodc.com has 9,000 samples. The way it works, if you see a picture, if you click on it, it opens up a new chapter and all the data is there. So it's rather data specific and it's linked with Dr. Wilbur Allen YouTube, which is my YouTube channel. You wow. definitely want to check out the data on that, on that, on that sample. It's absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Yes. Absolutely spectacular. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, just uh, being devil's advocate um, recently, you know, on TV, you know, the, this, the news we of course it's hard to believe the mainstream media these but 2023 has been one of the most uh uh, uh interesting years of um uh you uh uap um sightings uh, now just to be you know devil's advocate do you believe some of that or is that i mean your personal uh, your personal professional opinion my 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 data my data indicates that what you said is is 100% correct because as i as i mentioned when i when i set up my application i i created a fixed pool of analysis and the applications conditions in which they operated was all the same in all of the research sites the, the conditions in which the system operated so there's uniform consistency in all of the video samples. With, with that level of uniform consistency, we, we now have a scientific sample, a scientific grade sample of these organisms, which, which they indicated uh, based on that which were encountered by the USS Nimitz in 2004. The USS Nimitz deployed two F-18s, which is our fastest military jet application, to intercept this tic-tac shaped object and as the f-18s approached the object the pilots said the object went to um maximum warp meaning it went so fast that if you blinked you lost it and they blinked and they lost it wow it was there and then it went so fast it was not there anymore wow. and they didn't know where the hell it went so yes uh, based on, on the uh, events that were documented in the past and based on the objects that I was able to document starting from 2017 to 2020, 21 perhaps, 21, yes, um, four years of research data from uh, application that never changed in each site. So each sample is the same in terms of uh, uniform definitions and quality. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we're talking scientific. We're doing UF, UFO research scientifically, scientifically, not like most of these people who say they do UFO research and they're reading some books and they look at some pictures. Dude, I'm doing the actual deal. I see the real deal. Yeah. And in seeing the real deal, um, I'm trying to convince those that are interested in my work at the History Channel, Discovery, the Weather Channel, etc., to look at this new level of data. But the problem with the new level of data that I generated is that most humans are not ready to deal with it. It's just too far over their heads, dude. Whatever these objects are, unless you've got a PhD in bio biology or molecular physics, you just won't know exactly what it is you're looking at. Because I personally 
based on the objects that I encountered, have never seen anything like these. Never. Wow. Never. Well, Dr. Allen, um, wow. Uh, much appreciated your time. Um, thank you for your research, your work. We com uh, I commend you and, and thank you for your service. Uh, with the last couple of seconds, uh, is there anything that else you would like to put out? Uh, how did how anyone to uh, find your research? Uh, any well, uh, interviews I'm, or anything coming up? I'm 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 looking for scientific investors to create the next level of optical lens, combined with the next level of camera technology, which is the Nikon D6, converted to full spectrum infrared. That, within itself, brother would be spectacular but nobody has anything nobody has anything like what i got now so what i'm about to create is completely off the charts it's like going to warp i'm going to go to warp on them <laughs> i hear that that's cool well uh, yep. thank you again and uh if we get a chance we try to have you come back this is vessel one signing out and we all like to thank dr allen for joining us and hopefully we can have him returning back soon um last statements always search for the truth and in the truth you will better yourself better me have a better today and a better tomorrow and with that thank you peace <laughs>